Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful week coding with Dash and building Python web apps. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do part two of a multi-page app in Python. Last week, we built this app, which had uh, different pages and the links looked like this. And this week, we are going to um, build on top of that and make it a little bit more advanced. So we're going to have the same title and the same graphs, but we're going to add an image. We're going to tie the graph to the radio item. This graph as well. We're going to tie the drop down to the graph. And we're going to use dash bootstrap to see how this is um, done inside a new layout. And we're going to give it names right before we had page one page two and you would see here page two here we gave it we, we are showing the exact same thing but we are giving it different names all right so i recommend going into my github and downloading app b or you can just go into each one of them and just click on the file and then just um, select all or just look at it raw select all and copy and make sure that your files in your computer look exactly like this if you want to run this code directly on the browser instead of installing PyCharm or using your computer just go to the first page dash by plotly my github repo and you can follow the instructions in this gif of how to do it directly in the browser just copy this link all right so pause the video get set and make sure that you have at b all in uh, ready to go okay so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to open up the app.py file the app.py file is similar to the app.py file that we had in the last video but the main difference is that we are creating this uh, sidebar and to do this we are using the dbc nav link we are using this right here the uh, dbc nav and inside the dbc nav we are building for each page we are building one dbc nav link so if in in uh, example a last week we had the app here we had four page in pages for each page uh, include the name and the path inside a DCC link which would lead you here these links right here in this case we're building this nav bar and we do that by importing dash bootstrap as DBC DBC is the um, what we're going to use for the layout and we're going to create a sidebar which later we will put inside the layout and this sidebar is a simple DBC dot, um, dot nav and for each page sorry for each page inside uh, 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 um, the pages folder for each one of these pages just uh, extract build a nav link where the children has the name of the page so you'll see the name here home and the second page is tip analysis and then the href the path is is the the page path right it extracts it from here in the page path so that's why tip analysis you'll see the path pg2 other data and this will be the path right here so very similar to the first uh, video we do active exact so it will look like this you see how this is dark blue and then when you click on this this is dark blue uh, dash bootstrap will recognize this automatically vertical true because we want this as a vertical sidebar you can also do vertical false and then and then it will be like this uh, on top as a as a nav bar and these are just colors that we give it in styling. So now that we have the sidebar, I'm going to build uh, my layout. And in this case, I'm using the DBC container. I have plenty of videos on the dash bootstrap layout. Just click on the video above, uh, introduction to boost, bootstrap layout, and, um, and it'll be a lot clearer. But it's not really that difficult. I'm building a container. And inside the container, which is the whole page, I'm creating a few rows. The first row is going to be the title, you see, as the first row. Let's put this here. 
I should make this bigger for you so you can see. So the first row is uh, the title, as you can see here, Python multi-page app. And then I put a horizontal uh, line, which is this line right here. And then I'm creating a second row. And in the second row, this is going to be um, the rest of my page. Anything under the horizontal line is going to be the second row. So in the second row, I'm going to divide it, this space, this page, into two different sections. The first section on the left, this um, column component, is going to have the sidebar that you see here. And the section on the right will have the page container. And if you remember from last video, the page container is everything is uh, represents the layout from every single page. Page one layout, this is the page container. If I choose other data, then this is the page container from page three. It's all of this, right? So each layout of each page will go into, will replace the page container. So that's why you see it on the right side of the page. Now this is a neat trick. This is telling the, uh, the layout of the page, it's telling it that within this row, I have two, two column components. If the screen is a very small screen, let's say like this one, this is, very, this is as small as it can get, extra small, then this section, the sidebar, this column component will be four columns wide and this one will be eight columns wide. So this on the left will be four, and this on the right will be eight. Right? Every um, page will have a maximum of 12 columns. So if this is four, this is um, one third of the page will have the sidebar, and then two thirds of the page will have the page container, right? Which in this case, that's page container. If we're going to home, this will be page one. And in page one, you'll see that um, we have the drop down and then we have the graph. So these two things are going to be um, uh, on the right side of the page, eight columns wide. Same thing if it's a small screen. Now, if it's a medium screen, this will be actually two, two, uh, two columns wide. And the page container, the drop down and the graph will be 10 columns wide. So this is medium screen is probably about this, I would assume. This is probably medium screen. And it means ten, two out of 12 is one six, and this will be five six. So this will be this part of the page, the left part will be one six of the page, and this right part of the page, the drop down and the graph, which is the page container, will be five six of the page. Same thing for the re anything bigger than medium, large, extra, uh, extra large, and extra, extra large, two and 10. So this is how we built our, our layout where the sidebar is always on the left and will change uh, size according to the size of the, of the screen, if it's a computer or a laptop or a cell phone. All right, so we have our nav bar. If you have any questions about it, please under the video uh, in the comments, I will be happy to answer you. So this is like a sidebar. Now, in page one, if you go to page one, you can see that we have the drop down and we have the graph. Um, the only difference here is that we're putting everything inside a dash bootstrap again, right? If in the last video we had the page one just as a regular HTML, just drop down and graph, here I'm saying instead of uh, HTML, just put this everything inside, well, put it inside an HTML div, but inside this div, We'll have the first row will be the drop down where we'll have, uh, if it's extra small screen, 10 columns. If it's a large screen, it'll be four. All right, so if you go here, you'll see if it's an um, extra, uh, if it's a large screen, the drop down will be four. If it's a extra small screen, the drop down will be 10. So you see it almost takes up the whole part of this section of the page, the right page. And then same thing with the graph. Well, the graph is always going to be 12 columns wide because I always want to be um, as, as, as wide as possible in this right part of the page, right? And <coughs> I did very, very similar. I did in page two, I, I divided it into two separate rows. This is page two, tip analysis. 
Um, and so the first row is going to have the cigarette and the radio item. You see the first row. Close it. We'll have one column that will have the um, the image with a cigarette, and then the column to the right. So this will be four columns wide, and this will be six columns wide. The radio items, and then underneath we'll have another row. Underneath this row, we'll have another row, and this row will have. Um, the graph that's 12 columns wide because I just need it as wide as possible. Um, two things to highlight here: the image is coming from this uh, the assets folder. So if you go into the assets folder, you'll see the assets folder is under the main app, app B, assets folder, and you'll see that we have. I'm not using smoking three. I'm just using smoking two. I'm using this image. I think it's 80 pixels wide by 60 pixels uh, high um, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting it like like this it, I'm saying the source is asset slash smoking dot jpg and then it just calls it it knows the image is there and it puts the image on the page the second thing to be aware of is that we changed the name you see we had here if before we had just page one page two page three now we have um, tip analysis and and home right so let's go to the home page for example right here page one sorry home so you'll see in the app.py file for every page in the sidebar that we're creating for every page um, in the uh, create a nav link with the page name right so the first page name is going to come from here page name home the second page name is going to be tip analysis and the third will be other data that's why when you go here you see home tip analysis and other data um, we also connect the last thing we did is connect the callback uh, we use the callback to connect the radio item to the graph or to connect here the drop down to the graph um, but I'm not going to go over it in this video because I have plenty of other videos look at the one up here that talk about the callback and how it helps to connect between different components on the in the app in other words the callback is what allows you to create an interact interactive app I hope this was helpful. If there was something you did not understand or still have questions about, please ask me under the video. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to continue this series and create more videos to enhance this app and make it even better. If you have any questions, I would recommend going to the Plotly forum, uh, community.plotly.com. On this forum, you'll get many different people that will answer you about the multi-page app and anything else you have questions about regarding Dash or Plotly. I hope you enjoyed. Always remember, help each other out because we are better together. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.